radial head slash neck fracture, closed reduction, percutaneous reduction, and open reduction. Kamal Gokus, MD, Baskent University Alanya Research and Practice Center. Acknowledgement. We would like to cite Cocker, M, and Millis, M, ND. Operative Techniques, Pediatric Orthopedic Surgery. The figures and knowledges of this video have been retrieved from the textbook of Operative Techniques, Pediatric Orthopedic Surgery. We would like to advise this book all residents and orthopedic surgeons. Pitfalls. Reversal of the radial head, 180 degrees rotation, is a contraindication for both closed and percutaneous reduction. Significant soft tissue edema or a mass is a contraindication for closed reduction. Localized infection, cellulitis, abscess, over the radial head is a contraindication for open reduction. Associated dislocation of the radial head fragment is a contraindication for closed reduction. Controversies. Radial neck angulation greater than 65 degrees and completely displaced fractures may be difficult or impossible to reduce closed. Localized infection, cellulitis, abscess, over the radial head may complicate percutaneous reduction using Steinman pin. Open reduction is only rarely needed since almost all radial head slash neck fractures can be reduced by closed or percutaneous means. Treatment options. Acceptance of position. Closed reduction. Percutaneous reduction with a Steinman pin. Open reduction. Indications. Depending upon the extent of fracture displacement and angulation, there might be better indications for each of the three different techniques, closed reduction, percutaneous reduction, and open reduction. Closed reduction indications, fractures with displacement greater than 2 mm or lateral angulation greater than 20 to 30 degrees. Percutaneous reduction indications, fractures with displacement greater than 2 mm or fractures with lateral angulation greater than 20 to 30 degrees that are not reducible by closed method. Open reduction indications, fractures with displacement greater than 2 mm or fractures with lateral angulation greater than 20 to 30 degrees that are not reducible by closed or percutaneous methods. Also, reversal of the radial head, 180 degrees rotation, is an indication for open reduction. Examination and imaging. Neurovascular examination, posterior interosseous nerve. Orthogonal radiographs of the radial head and elbow joint. Figure is a radiograph showing fracture of the neck of the radius that could be treated with closed reduction or percutaneous reduction. Figures A and B are radiographs of a fracture of the neck of the radius with complete dislocation that may be difficult to reduce closed. The radial head and neck are subcutaneous on the lateral side of the elbow, just distal to the lateral epicondyl. The posterior interosseous nerve penetrates the supinator muscle just distal to the radial neck and may lie directly upon the bone, figure. Another figure depicts the surface anatomy of the posterior interosseous nerve in relation to the radial neck. Pearls. Place the arm board on the ipsilateral side of the patient's head, folded up to the table, to allow room for the C-arm. Position the C-arm with the receiver acting as a table, perpendicular to the table on the ipsilateral side, between the surgeon and assistant. Place the monitor on the contralateral side of the table for easy viewing. Pearls. Place the arm board on the ipsilateral side of the patient's head, folded up to the table, to allow room for the C-arm. Position the C-arm with the receiver acting as a table, perpendicular to the table on the ipsilateral side, between the surgeon and assistant. Place the monitor on the contralateral side of the table for easy viewing. Closed reduction. Positioning. The patient is placed in the supine position on the table with the arm board at the ipsilateral head, folded in, to act as a headboard extension. The elbow is positioned over the fluoroscopic receiver, see arm, figure. The surgical assistant should stand at the ipsilateral head of the table, stabilizing the distal humerus. Figure depicts the author's preferred setup of the operating room for a left radial neck fracture, with the arm board and C-arm on the same side and the monitor on the opposite side of the table. Closed reduction. The forearm is supinated and the surgeon places his or her thumb over the radial head. Figure. 
varus stress is applied to the elbow while the assistant stabilizes the distal humerus figure. Direct pressure is placed over the radial head while the forearm is gradually rotated into full pronation. Radiographic views, figs A and B, are taken in two planes to confirm reduction. Percutaneous reduction with a Steinman pin positioning. The patient is placed in the supine position on the table with the arm board at the ipsilateral head, folded in, to act as a headboard extension. The forearm and hand are prepped, and the elbow is then positioned over the fluoroscopic receiver, see arm, see figure. The surgical assistant should stand at the ipsilateral head of the table, stabilizing the distal humerus. Pearls. Use only the blunt end of the Steinman pin as the sharp end may damage the articular surface of the joint and may also injure the posterior interosseous nerve. Pitfalls. Do not cut down to bone distal to the radial neck as the posterior interosseous nerve may lie on the bone. Portal slash exposures. The portal is through a stab incision made just distal to the radial head slash neck on the lateral side of the forearm. A fluoroscopic view is taken with the knife blade or metallic marker over the distal radial neck to accurately identify the site of puncture, figure, which is then marked on the skin, figure. Procedure. Step 1. The forearm is slightly supinated and the stab incision is made with a knife blade just distal to the radial head. A hemostat is used to spread down to bone, angling in a slightly proximal direction to the fracture site. A large, 3 mm, blunt ended Steinman pin is advanced manually up to the radial head. Step 2. Varus stress is applied to the elbow while the assistant stabilizes the distal humerus. The blunt end of the Steinman pin is used to manipulate the radial head fragment into place. Gentle pronation may be performed as pressure is applied to the fragment. If the partial reduction is obtained, the pin may be removed and further manipulation by the close technique may be attempted. Radiographic views are taken in two planes to confirm reduction, figure. A simple 4.0 chromium suture is used to repair the incision. Pearls. Take a fluoroscopic view with the knife blade or metallic marker over the distal radial neck to accurately identify the site of puncture. Pearls. Care should be taken not to expose more than a few millimeters distal to the radial neck as the posterior interosseous nerve may lie on the bone and can be injured by the dissection or over-aggressive retraction. Use a hemostat to spread down to the bone, angling proximally to the fracture site. Pearls. Occasionally, the fracture will be maximally stable in pronation. Pitfalls. Prolonged immobilization greater than four weeks may result in a stiff elbow and forearm. Forgetting to split the cast or open a wide window may result in vascular compromise to the forearm and hand. Open reduction frequently results in limited pronation slash supination, so it is better to immobilize less than more. Pearls. The patient is placed in the supine position on the table with the forearm and elbow lying on the arm board or hand table. A tourniquet is applied to the upper arm. The elbow, forearm, and hand are prepped and draped. Portal slash exposures. A standard cocker incision is made over the lateral side of the elbow. The anconius is reflected anteriorly off the ulna and the joint capsule is exposed and entered. Step 1. After giving preoperative antibiotics, the tourniquet is inflated and the hand and arm are exsanguinated. A curvilinear incision is made over the lateral side of the elbow, extending distally from the tip of the lateral epicondyl to just distal to the radial neck. Step 2. The anconius is reflected off the proximal ulna, exposing the capsule of the radiocapitella joint. The joint is opened if the capsule has not already been disrupted. Step 3. The joint is irrigated, removing any clot. The radial head fragment is gently manipulated and reduced onto the distal fragment, with care not to disrupt any residual soft tissue attachments if they exist. The capsule is repaired if possible. Radiographic views are taken in two planes to confirm reduction, figures the skin is repaired in a standard fashion. Post-operative care and expected outcomes.
Postoperative care is similar for all three procedures described. After adequate reduction, a sterile dressing is applied to any surgical wound. A long arm cast is applied at 90 degrees of flexion with the forearm in neutral or slight supination. The cast should be bivalved or a large window should be removed anteriorly over the cubital fossa to allow for swelling. Cast immobilization is continued for three to four weeks.